we have found out the potential due to a single charge right and we found that that potential is dependent on which is a function of r was given by 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught into q by r right fine now what if we have a dipole get the point I have a dipole and what's a dipole that we did in the last chapter it is an equal and opposite charge separated by separated by a distance we designate the distance as 2a we designate the distance as We designate the distance as two A. Okay. And we also discussed that all the distances they'll be measured from the center of the dipole. Right? We also defined a thing called electric. Di electric dipole moment no electric dipole moment which is what which points from the negative charge to the positive charge which points from the negative charge to the positive charge and whose distance whose whose magnitude is 2a Q, right so this is how we define it right fine now what if due to this dipole I want to find the potential at a point P which is here correct So this is something like this. This is something like this. Fine. Okay. This I term as R1 and this I term as R2. But you should be aware we have said that the distances are measured from the center so so it is actually this distance that is known to you okay this distance that is known to you if you consider this as the origin then you'll appreciate that that this vector this vector I have this as my direction of the dipole moment okay and this will become my position vector no normally in rotation we do that so normally our position vector is is in all cases our position vector has got its tail at the origin which I take as the center of the dipole here the center of the dipole we have taken as as the origin okay that I have taken as origin so and and, and I actually designate it as O okay let us take designate this as A and this as B so this vector this vector makes an angle of theta with the with the dipole moment vector we understand and we we also understand that this is a and this is a that means o a is a and o b is a right so i am given r and theta right and i have to find out everything else in terms of 
r and theta right so so what is my potential potential due to a dipole can be found out by by applying the principle of superposition applying the principle of super position okay due to which the total field will be the sum of the fields due to individual charges okay it will be equal to the sum of the potential due to by which the potential will be the sum of the potential due to individual charges right fine it will be due it will be the the total potential will be the the potential due to the sum of the individual charges right and and one of the charges is plus q while the other charge is minus q one of the charges is plus q while the other charge is minus q so so v has to be to be q upon 4 pi epsilon naught from plus q the distance is r1 plus minus q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r2 because from minus q the distance is r2 so it actually becomes q upon 4 pi epsilon naught 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 do we get the point do we get the point it is 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 so our main aim is to find out this 1 upon r1 and 1 upon r2 right okay fine Now, how do I find R1? Okay. How do I find R1? See, if I extend this further. Okay. If I extend this further and from here, I drop a perpendicular onto it. Fine. And call this point C. then triangle OCP is a right triangle do you understand that triangle OCP is a right triangle okay but before that so we extend we extend PA to C such that OC is perpendicular to PC such that OC is perpendicular to PC is it not now in triangle OCP in triangle OCP what happens OCP what happens what happens No, perhaps we have done something wrong. 
because I required this, no? I required this. So let us make it the hypotenuse. Let us draw the 90 degree here, right? Like this. Fine. So, so, so this does not hold. We, we say, we, we draw, we draw AC perpendicular to OP, okay? We draw, we draw AC, we draw A, A, C perpendicular to OP, fine? So that triangle ACP is a right triangle. Is it not? Is a right triangle. Now what happens in this right triangle? What is the what is the distance OC? Can you tell? In triangle OCA, in triangle OCA, which is a right triangle OCA, what happens? This base OC upon OA. Okay. OC upon OA, which is A. Okay. OC upon A is equal to cos theta. Is it not? It implies that OC is equal to A cos theta. We get that? OC is equal to A cos theta. So CP is equal to? Does CP is equal to OP minus OC which is equal to what is OP? OP is R, OC is A cos theta. Correct. So I get my CP as this. What is my CA? Okay. CA upon A. Here, here only C A upon A is equal to sine theta. It implies that C A is equal to A sine theta. So C A is equal to A sine theta. Okay. C A is equal to A sine theta. Now in this triangle, I trying to find out in triangle ACP AP square is equal to AC square plus CP square plus CP square okay AC square plus CP square so what is AP square AP square is R1 square. So R1 square is equal to is equal to AC square. AC I know is A square sine square theta plus R minus A cos theta whole square which is A square sine square theta plus R square minus 2AR cos theta plus A square cos square theta. A square sine square theta plus A square cos square theta gives you what? A square. This together will give you A square plus R square minus 2 A R cos theta. I rearrange to write it as Okay. Okay. Now, if I take out R square, then it becomes 1 minus 2A upon R cos theta plus A square upon R square, which is approximately equal to R square into 1 minus 2A upon R cos theta since a upon R 
is very very less than one understand what are we doing we have taken the case in a dipole we have you have seen in the last chapter we always take r to be very very greater than a because why in the first place did we define the concept of dipole just because we had to deal with the dipole of the atoms and the size of the atom itself is of the order of 10 to the power minus 15 meters understand so that's why this okay that's why this now 1 upon r1 square is 1 upon r square into 1 minus 2a upon r cos theta to the power minus 1. No? This had come in the denominator but I have taken it up and put a power of minus 1. Correct? So 1 upon r1, what do I do? I raise the whole thing to the power half is equal to 1 by r square okay into 1 minus 2a upon r cos theta to the power minus 1 to the power half i raised both the sides to the power half the left hand side became 1 upon r1 square to the power half so it made this 1 upon r1 and and this is how it is and this means it is equal to 1 upon r square to the power half into 1 minus 2a upon r cos theta to the power minus 1 to the power half. So what happens? What formula did I apply here? a into b to the power n is a to the power n into b to the power n. Is it not? And here am I, apply I am applying this to the power that. So a to the power n to the power m is a to the power nm. Okay. So this becomes this to the power minus half. Okay. We understand. And this makes it 1 upon r and there is a thing called, this is, this I will expand by binomial, fine, this I will expand by a binomial for, for any integer or for any rational number. Till now the binomial expansion that we had seen in class 9th was, was related to the, the power of a plus b to the power n, n being a whole number. When it is not a whole number, this is how it expands 1 plus x to the power n is equal to 1 plus nx plus n into n minus 1 upon 2 factorial into x square okay plus n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 upon 3 factorial into x cube plus it will go to infinity. Understand? Now here my x is minus 2a upon r cos theta. Is it not? x is equal to minus 2a upon r cos theta and n is equal to minus half understand is it not now you try to understand if i square this this will become a square of this and a upon r being very very less than 1, a square upon r square will also be very very less than 1, right? 